Hello and welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Wind in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. This episode of Rate My Dungeon will be going over Sunken Temple. Sunken Temple being in the range of about level 48 to 50-ish. Um, that'll be your like sort of prime level that you want to head into this instance. Classic anyway. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Sunken Temple is located in... Oh god, what's it called now? Swamp of Sorrows. <laughs> the uh, name eluded me for a second. Swamp of Sorrows. It's on the very far right in the middle of basically... It's an island in the middle of uh, a pool of water. Uh, Sunken Temple is one of the bigger dungeons in World of Warcraft with 11 bosses in total. And this isn't even including the small mini bosses that you need to unlock the big bosses. So the way that Sunken Temple works is you have multiple floors, about two or three. And essentially, there's mini bosses on each of these floors and you have to do certain tasks on each of these floors to unlock your bosses. Um, on one of the floors, you have to kill eight individual, or is it six? No, six different mini bosses and then click statues in that specific order in order to activate one of the bosses on the very bottom floor. And then on the main floor, you need to kill, I think it's around eight bosses to unlock Jindo's um, room, which is another main boss. I'm pretty sure it's called Jindo. He's the troll boss in there. He's the troll boss. But essentially, it's a load of mini bosses. It's around probably, Jesus, 15? Yeah, about 15. There's probably an extra one or two that I probably can't remember. But yeah, there's about 15 mini bosses in there, but they don't give any good loot. They give the normal standard um, mob loot, so they're not really worth talking about. They're just means to an end, essentially. The gear that you can get from these bosses is very decent, um, especially the ones that are on the main floor. You've got Avatar of Hakar, Jindo, I'm pretty sure he's called Jindo, um, and then the Shade of Aranicus, you can get some really, really good um, pieces from all of these, both caster and melee DPS can, or physical DPS, I should say, because hunters fall into that category. So the, de- the loot in there is very decent, but it comes with a trade-off. The dungeon is very complex. It's a maze. It is an absolute maze. If you've not done this before, you will get lost. If you have an entire group who have not done this before, you will get lost. I guarantee it. If you go in there blind, you're in there for a few hours figuring out what the hell is happening, where you are, etc. If you've done this a few times and are decent with your, um, what would you call it? Your navigation skills? That would be it then you can picture it in your head where you have to go, what you have to do, etc. It's one of them things that sticks with me. But if you were to go in here as a new player and you've just hit level 48, you would be very much overwhelmed with the amount of routes that you can take and where to go and what to do, etc. Obviously, you have to click these statues in a certain order to summon bosses, but Wowhead has everything with regards to that so if you do get stuck look at wowhead and they can help you out with the summoning of bosses or if you alternatively have alternatively have atlas loot as an add-on i'm pretty sure it can tell you which statues that you need to click also but very very complex one of the more complex dungeons i spoke about whaling caverns being very complicated and being very much a maze this is kind of worse than that because ultimately you've got different floors to it. You have different floors in Whale and Caverns, but you actually have three different floors in order to navigate the, um, the Sunken Temple here, essentially. It's something. It's something to behold. I would very much recommend going in there and seeing it for yourself, because as soon as you walk in, you've got four different pathways that you can choose. You can choose to go left, you can choose to go, go top left, top right, or right. Exactly. Already you've got a 25% chance to go kind of the right way. Like, actually more like 50. Two of them are the way to go. Um, The way to go, by the way, is top right or top left, um, because that's what leads you to the statues. But you have to go up and down some stairs to kill mini bosses, to click statues and stuff. it's, It's very complicated. I can't do it any justice. It's so complicated, in fact, that when they did the revamp, 
they took out, they gutted about 70% of the dungeon. They straight up gutted 70% of the dungeon. So it's just one floor now in retail um, with Jindo, Avatar of Hakar, the Drake, the dragon bosses that spawn after these like bosses that you kill and Shade of Aranicus and stuff. And they absolutely gutted the entire maze part, the entire puzzle solving part, which is a bit of a shame because it's quite enjoyable. There's a lot of mobs that are up there, so it was a good XP farm. But essentially, yeah, they gutted 70% of the instance. Um, if you go into retail instance, the uh, retail version of Atel Hakar, uh, or Sunken Temple as a lot of people know it, uh, you go into the middle of the room and there's a grate. You look... Wait, is there a grate? No, I'm pretty sure you can just fall down there. No, there is a grate. There is a grate in the retail version. There isn't one in um thingy version classic. But you can look down, and that was where one of the bosses spawned, essentially. That was the lower half of the dungeon, which is quite cool to see that it's still there. But it's just a shame that, you know, you can't access it, or you can't go up to the upper levels. Oh, yeah, by the way, if you look up, you'll see the statues that are ultimately... Uh, around can you well you can see like where the mini bosses were there's like little platforms above so yeah they gutted 70 percent of it which is a bit of a shame but it is what it is so overall if i have to give a classic rating for this i would give it a six or seven out of ten probably more leaning towards a six purely on the basis that it is very very complex and essentially if you're new to the game, it will be a bit of a difficult time navigating your way around, but it is good fun once you've understood the layout of the instance and, uh, you know, you have a handle on where you're going, essentially, because it makes for a lot of XP, it makes for good fun, it makes for a long dungeon run, which really does split up your questing time. But yeah, I'd give it a 6 or 7, more, more 6 out of 10, more than anything. But that is it for this episode. Thank you for it all very much for listening do check out the patreon for ad free content as well as twitch and youtube constant stuff happening over there thank you all very much and go with valor friend goodbye all